What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Real Relationship Podcast. Episode 2. 2.0. Yeah. I'm Asha Steele. I'm Devin Steele. And we're so excited that you guys are tuning in with us today. We really appreciate all the feedback and yep. comments you left for episode 1. It really got us excited. Yeah. And we're really excited for this episode today because I think it's a good one. Yeah, I think it's a really good one. But we, we want to encourage y'all. Keep leaving y'all comments on our Instagram. Let us yes. know what you want to hear about. Leave your reviews, your ratings on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, whatever you listen to this podcast on. And keep sharing it with people who need to hear this information, who are, you know, either in a relationship, coming out of a relationship, going into a new relationship. Mm -hmm. You know how the new year get. New year, new you, Or even new looking boo. for a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Just share it with everybody. Yeah. So yeah. before we jump into this episode, uh, we just finished up Christmas. So let's talk a little bit about the holidays Asha, how was your Christmas? My Christmas was lovely. It was Aria's first Christmas, yeah. so we got to spend it together as a family. Yeah. Aria's our four-month-old baby girl. Yes, so she looked really excited. Y'all should go check out her picture with her daddy. She looked really excited yeah. the end of Christmas, but it was really good. We just spent time in the house with family. Um, we cooked dinner, which was awesome. Mm -hmm. you know, I had to chef good, it up. You know, he's you know a great how I cook, do. so... Dinner was delicious. We yeah. had a great time just playing games and just, you know, enjoying family time, which is what I feel like the holidays is about. Yeah, me too. Um, I never really been big on, you know, gifts or materialistic things, especially after what Leah th went through. It completely changed my, you know, outlook on life. So for me, the holidays are really about, you know, being able to spend time with family and just showing each other how grateful you are for having each other in each other's lives and just you know creating memories that you could hold on to yeah. forever yeah that's yeah. really important yep so, so leaving from christmas you know everything the holidays all back to back to back it seems yeah. like around this year we get into hold the on new i have year. a question for you because i think a lot of the fellas might want to know what so for women what is it does the amount of money because i saw this on social media a lot does the amount of money that a man spends on a gift matter the size of the gift or is it really just like the thought oh my gosh, that it, this could be a whole nother podcast no. to be honest we, but but I, I just want to know this question because i know a lot of the fellas want to know this answer does it matter about how much money you spend on a gift or is it all about the thought so or it depends on what season you are in your life i'm definitely going to go with it depends on the season it depends on the person you know everybody's not at a certain point, or everybody everybody might not get to that point, maybe, you know, what's important for someone else may not be important for somebody else. Me, personally, I can speak for, it's not necessarily about the price ticket as much as it is about the thought. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as a female, male as well, we like nice things, of course, but, you know, I will always take over, a, take a thoughtful gift over something that's just extravagant you know what i mean like that's you'll you find more sentimental sentimental value in something that's thought out and thoughtful versus something that's just like nice and shiny but i mean we like nice things too so okay so you gotta do a little bit of both i mean a little bit of both is good right. but i don't that's not to say that it has to be because you know everybody everybody's still stacking their coins everybody's not at a certain position so that's not to say that if someone can't afford to do certain things that you shouldn't appreciate that because it's all about the thought. Okay. So that's what I feel like it is. Like, I'm not going to take nothing away because we had moments before, you know, not saying like us personally, but just like in general, well, we have had moments, you know, we had a lot of things that we had to cut back on, which we explained in a previous video, but it's just yeah. like doing little things that was more important for me versus the finer things in life, you know? Got you. So, yeah. Okay, so let, let's get into episode two, uh, which we called Baggage Claim. Baggage Claim. So go ahead and baggage explain claim. to them why we call so it Baggage Claim. one, of course, we were just talking about the holidays. Yep. And with now it about to be a few days away from the new year, 2020, mm -hmm. um, we decided that it was great to talk about Baggage Claim. Basically leaving your old baggage in the past or just kind of relieving yourself of some of that baggage. So it was perfect just to go into the new year, just like, with a new mindset right. and how you can go into a new relationship or even a relationship that you're in currently with a new mindset and just not carrying the weight of your past into that relationship pretty yeah. much. And I think that's an issue that we've all experienced in our lives. Um, yeah. Just going through different relationships 
whether it's with your uh, your spouse, your boyfriend, or girlfriend, um, with your you upbringing, know. yeah, yeah, your, your parents, what you actually had an example of what love is as you were growing up. Mm -hmm. Like we all come with baggage, and you know, a lot of the time we bring some of that that negative baggage into our new relationships, and we just get stuck in this cycle where we keep saying seeing the same thing over and over again just with a new person. So we thought this was important just to share our experience with what we've been through, you know, the baggage that we brought into our relationship and how we were able to resolve that so that we can create a new future for ourselves and not really make one another suffer because of what we experienced in the past. Right. So you want to get started? Yeah. So, started? I mean, let's just, started? let's just keep it real with them and just talk about some of the baggage in our past that we had to deal with in our relationship. So I'll per from my perspective as a female, um, I would say a lot of females that I know personally, um, and even other females just from social media and everything like that, we experience men that cheat, right? Hmm. We experience some cheaters. Okay. So me personally, I had my fair share of cheaters. I should have been on an episode of Cheaters, catching plenty of, we ain't going to say the word, but I should have been on Cheaters because I've experienced my handful of cheaters. Um, so I feel like that was really, especially going into a situation where I was talking to a professional athlete. And, you know, a lot of people have a stereotype as far as how athletes are. Um, I definitely had my reservations of what, what I was going into and what I was going to expect. But I look too good. She couldn't help herself. <laughs> so I definitely had my mind thinking that things would be possibly a certain way. Um, just because I felt like, okay, at some point, all men cheat. What's that song? Oh, black men don't cheat. <laughs> I ain't even going to touch on that. You know what? I'm not even going to touch on that. I'm just saying at the time. I had my reservations that all men cheat, pretty much. Right. So I was just like going into a situation, in our situation, thinking that in mm -hmm. the beginning. And I feel like that kind of was a very challenging mindset for me to get over um, in our relationship. I know for myself personally, I'll, I'll kind of give an example. But when we first started dating, um, I was really like weary of social media and that's because before in a previous relationship I was dating this guy and I started to notice like little things that you know had my one uh, my woman's intuition going off like oh this kind of suspects I don't know about this you know maybe you taking too long to call or text, are you out too long, or you don't get back, or you don't do this and the third. But with social media, it was funny because I started to notice, um, like, if certain people popped up, like, oh, you just started following this person, or this person just started commenting. She didn't just start to notice. She went looking for it. Well, not that I went looking for it, because, ladies, it's, it's the thing where, with social media, like, yes, you notice, well, me, personally, I noticed the numbers at times. So if I see that my man is following a certain amount of people <laughs> and then you start following, adding on extra people, I want to know who you're who, following. Who you follow? Who, who you just who added? Who are we following? Okay. Cause your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. Right. 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 So we're all friends. We're going to all be friends. If you get a new friend, I need to know. <laughs> so that's what I was looking for. But ladies, keep it honest and, fe and fellas as well. If someone starts commenting on your the person that you're with, your partner's page, and leaving little, you know, oh, this looks cute, you look good, oh, hard eyes, or whatever emojis, you start to look, like, sideways, like, okay, who is this person? Mm, okay. <laughs> so you start to look like, who is this person? So me personally, I started to look into that, and I ultimately noticed that, yes, indeed, this was people that this person was interacting with, but they was also, you know, now it's a text message coming from this person who you just started following. Okay, so now I'm looking at your phone and your text messages and come to find out you were cheating. So 
I just tied it all together. So social media was kind of like she bought all that baggage into Yeah, her. social media was definitely a trigger for me because I felt like it all went hand in hand. It went from the DMs to the follows to the likes to the emojis to the comments to the text messages to the phone calls to the now your ass is going over there in the middle of the day or at night and you cheating. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that was my baggage that I brought in. I felt like men were cheating. Our men were cheaters, and so we we struggled with that a lot. Yeah, when we first met, because she was on me, and I, I'm gonna be completely honest with you. What she was coming at me for, I was doing it, right? So if I'm if when I was liking girls' pictures, um, on Instagram or I was following new women, it was because I had interest in them. But it was like we Keep had just mind, met. We but, had just met, and she okay. was already on me about this. So I'm right. like, but keep in why mind, is this, she? These actions were from a previous situation that I was talking about. So, right? Yeah, yeah. No, well, we're doing. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm right. like, you, you. When we got to know each other, like you said, you felt like social media led to whatever happened in your previous relationships. Mm-hmm. But you came into our relationship like really strong. Right. Like not even relationship because we wasn't in a relationship, but just the point where we Us were getting to know each other. Or whatever. Right? That's another thing because she thinks talking is considered a relationship. Oh, we're we're gonna have a podcast but, about that for sure. But when we first just started talking, you was coming on really strong about social media. And I was right. like, Why is she doing this? Like, although she's right, I am liking these girls' pictures and following them because, you know, I may find them attractive or you know, trying to get their attention or what it may be. But the fact that you were coming on so strong, I was just like, what's up with this girl? Yeah. But just understanding what you experienced as we, you know, got to know each other and understanding what you went through in your past relationships, I started to understand. Right. Um, and that's why I just think that communicating about what you've been through in your past, um, I think is very vital in helping your next relationship be healthy because then it allows your partner to understand your actions. But that was something that we struggled with a lot. Mm -hmm. And as she broke it down to me, uh, why she was acting like that, I started to, you know, remove myself from that part of social media. Like I stopped following females on social media. I wasn't liking other pictures because I knew that those were triggers from your past. Right. So what about you? What was your baggage that you feel like you brought in? Man, I had a lot of baggage, uh, for real, to be. <gasps> yeah, and you baggage. know, you know, his I'm baggage not, was over the weight yeah, limit. Okay, not, he had yeah. to take bag articles of clothing out. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to these people. I, I came with a lot, of, a lot of baggage. Um, not just from previous relationships because I had only been in, in one relationship, but just from my upbringing, uh, never being able to see uh, that strong example of a relationship. You know, like my parents got divorced when I was in third grade. It was a it was a pretty uh, bad divorce. And so growing up, I just didn't really believe in love because watching my parents go through what they went through, it really broke my heart. And, you know, I just started not to trust women. Um, so that that was one of the baggage I came with just from not being able to see love growing up in that aspect and then just how society shaped my mindset as a man, you know, thinking that you're only really a man by the amount of women you talk to or sleep with, right? Like that was the game that I was taught. So it took me a long time to really shake that off Mm -hmm. um, because I believed in that. So bringing in that baggage, feeling like, you know, marriage wasn't the cool thing or being in a serious relationship wasn't the cool thing was, part of the baggage I I bought in and just, you know, being an athlete, I didn't trust a lot of women um, because I dealt with a lot of women, especially in college who had, you know, boyfriends back home and was still doing whatever they wanted to. So I would look at stuff like that and I'm like, man, Mm -hmm. I ain't never trusting the women. Like I'm never trusting women. I just grouped all women together. So I came with a lot of baggage that I had to, you know, work my way through or we had to work through it because yeah, I didn't do it on my own. And I feel like that's pretty much 
the situation for a lot of different couples or relationships. Like, it's a lot that you take away, like you said, either from your childhood, from your upbringing to yeah. previous situations, relationships that you was in that can contribute to either the downfall or y'all coming together and overcoming all of that. So yeah. I think that's really important that we really try to talk and, you know, get through that. And we had some steps that we actually used yeah. to get over that. Because, like you said, it's definitely challenging, especially if it's years of you harboring these type of emotions or these feelings. It's, like, hard to just get rid of. You're not going to get rid of it overnight. You're not going to get rid of it sometime within a month, two, or even a year. No, it takes time. It, yeah. takes, it takes work. You know, a lot of people believe that time heals everything. And that's just not true. It's really what you do at that time that brings healing, just recognizing, you know, what you've been through and just taking these steps that we're about to share with you guys now to make sure that you're not, you know, bringing that that old baggage into your new relationship. Like uh, yeah. a lot of times when I'm coaching people or I, I teach at seminars, I, I like to use the analogy like, okay, say for instance, um, last week I had to go to Vegas to do some work. Right. So when before I go on the trip, uh, I look at my responsibilities. What events do I have to show up to? What is the attire that I have to wear at these events? And then I check the weather or what it's like to be or what is going to be in Vegas. And then I pack my bag accordingly for that trip. Um, so I go on that trip. I come back home and I immediately had to fly to the East Coast. Well, of course, it's different weather in the East Coast. It's not as hot as Vegas is. It's the winter time, so you go from being in 75 degree weather to 50, 40s, 30s, right? Mm -hmm. So I have to unpack the bag that I had in Vegas and pack it with new stuff because I have new responsibilities on the East Coast. I'm attending different events that uh, requires different dress attire, and the weather's different. Mm -hmm. So I have to pack my bag accordingly for that trip. And a lot of times with us in relationships, we don't unpack that bag from the trip that we went on, right? That bad experience that we had in our in our old relationship, and we keep that same bag, we keep the same clothes, we keep the same problems, the same issues, and we go on that new journey in our life with the old stuff. Mm -hmm. And we wonder why we're why it's not working out, right? Why our clothes is is not fit for that 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 weather that we're experiencing, right? Why our attitudes are the same, why we're seeing the same thing, why we feel like we're caught up in the cycles because we never really look at that bag that we had packed and start to unpack the stuff so that we can enjoy the new journey that we're on in our life. So these next steps that me and Asha are going to share with you is going to help you unpack that bag so you can then repack it again with the stuff that's going to be valuable for your new journey in your life. Right. Okay. Analogy. I see you trying to, you know, yes. Throw it on. He just gave y'all a little taste of what he does. And don't be trying to steal <laughs> my stuff out there either, y'all. But no. So <clears throat> the first step that we like to talk about is pretty much taking ownership yeah. of what you may have done or not taking ownership of it. I feel like that's the big thing because a lot of times if someone's doing you wrong or if you're in a situation where it didn't come out the way you wanted to come out, sometimes we take on unnecessary unnecessary energy that we don't need to mm -hmm. like we take faults for things that we didn't do so if you know that you have ownership and whatever contributes to your breaking up or a disagreement or a downfall or whatever it may have happened in your particular situation if you know you have ownership within that take ownership of that mm -hmm. acknowledge what you've done wrong or what may have happened that you could have done better and work on that. Right. If it's not, don't take ownership for someone else's wrongdoings. Like a lot of times I know I see females like, oh my gosh, if this person cheated on me and I can account to, I can speak for this for myself. Like, oh, this person cheated. What did I do? Maybe I didn't do this enough. Maybe I didn't do that enough. Maybe I didn't act like this or I didn't act, I didn't give enough or I, you know, and you actually did give your all to the situation, but it's just like, you're trying to find all the things to place the blame on yourself to make yeah. it seem like you're the one at fault for it. Don't do that because nine times out of 10 is not your fault. Yeah, nine that, times I out mean, of 10, there's, it would never be your fault for somebody cheating. Like, well, the, yeah, there's, it's, there's, you're never at fault for your partner cheating. There's no excuse for your partner to cheat that you have to blame yourself on. Mm -hmm. Cheating is a decision that your partner makes. Exactly. You need to sit down and really talk with your partner. And if you're not happy with something, then you share that with them. But stepping out on the relationship is not 
you can't take blame for that. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? So like Asha said, it's so important for you to really look at what caused the relationship to go bad for before you move into your next relationship just so that you don't repeat those same steps. Like maybe you you were working a lot. You wasn't paying them a lot of attention. Well, now that you understand that that was a part of the demise of your relationship, you can now focus on that moving forward to make sure that you're uh, putting aside enough time to make your your partner feel um, wanted, yeah. to feel like you care about them, to feel like they're a big part of your life. Exactly. So our next step pretty much is what? The next step is just realizing that certain people are just placed in your life momentarily. Like sometimes when we get in relationships, and I, I don't think that you can really not do this, we feel like this person is the one. Right, that if it don't work out with them, then it won't work out with anybody. But we go through different seasons in our life. And I believe, I honestly believe that some people are brought into our lives to teach us lessons, right? Mm -hmm. Things that we can learn from and things that can help us grow uh, both uh, mentally, spiritually, physically, so that when we do find the one, we're able to handle it, right? We're able to sustain that relationship because we learned so much from our past relationships that it now prepares us for the future. Yeah. I feel like, like you said, it's like everybody's, most people are in your life for a season or reason. Like you said, like you come in, if you're thinking that you're with this person or you have this idea like, oh, this is supposed to be my lifelong partner. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to get married and all this other stuff. And then it doesn't work out and you're sitting there like, okay, I done lost my soulmate. I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know where I'm going to go from here. Like, I'm never going to find love. Like, me personally, I've experienced that as well. And... Oh, you doing, just experienced a lot of these I steps, I mean, huh? as a woman, we experience a lot of things, a lot of emotions very young. And so we be thinking that we in love and it be that little puppy love phase. And we be thinking it's more. And we like, my family used to tell me, girl, you got years and years to experience love. Like, don't don't be tripping. Especially when you in that teenage phase where you think you kind of grown, but you're oh, not yeah. necessarily grown. And that's where all the issues start to stir up. Yeah, so I was definitely at that point of feeling like I couldn't find love anymore. I was so destroyed. I didn't put tattooed love on my middle finger. Like, no, no, she. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, I she, was very. When I first met her, yeah, she had. She, I looked at her hand and she had like love on her middle finger, and I didn't know what that meant at first, right? I was a little bit slow because I'm a little bit slow. Oh my goodness! And and then I'm sitting there looking at her hand. And I'm like, yo. Does that mean what I think it mean? And like she tried to cover it up with her hand. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Let me see that. I'm like, yo, you was hurt that much in your past that your you went and was tatted heartbreak, hotel, F love on bitter, your hand. Better. Mary J. Blige playing every day. No more pain, <laughs> no more drama. Like I was going through it at that point in my life. Well, it was a few years before him, but I was going through it at that point. And so I had mark my hand up with the f love and it was just not a good look i got it removed now so you know i'm all because yeah, she found that real thing and living my best life so i'm not affected no more but yeah don't do that like don't sit up there and allow a certain situation to just affect your whole outlook on life because a new day will come a new situation a new person will come and you'll be like okay what was i even thinking that'll make you forget about everything yeah. that you've been through so definitely understand that People are in your lives. Certain people are in your lives for reasons. And except if they're no longer in your life and understand that things will get better, things will change, and someone else can come into your life at any moment that could make you think, like, what was I even thinking about? So just yeah. keep that in mind. But that's but, why it's so important to handle these issues because when that new person comes into your life, you don't want to run them off, yeah. right? And I think that leads us... And to our next step was just understanding that the next person is not responsible for what the old person in your life did to you. Yes, exactly. This, that's the that's a big one for me because I feel like it's very easy for you to just take all the the negativity that you have from any situation you're in and just dump it on the next person automatically just because you're you haven't dealt with it, you haven't you know, handle those issues. So it's mm -hmm. like, you're just carrying all this extra weight. And as you go into a new situation, 
A new person brings new problems. Like, no one's perfect. Any right. relationship isn't perfect. So if you're thinking that you're going to get out of this one relationship and you're going to find the perfect new person, you're not. So you're going to have a whole new set of problems to go along with your own set of problems, your old ones, and then you're going to just keep piling it up. But you have to realize that you have to let that person, that new person, build up their own issues. Y'all y'all going to have issues. Y'all going to have problems. But mm-hmm. you got to let, let them have their own situation. Like, you can't fault them for what someone else did to you. And I feel like a lot of times people do that. It's just like, oh, this person hurt me. Well, I'm automatically, if this person does this, I'm automatically take all that anger out on them or I'm automatically looking for whatever this person did wrong to me within that person. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't do that. You should just allow for that new situation to blossom. And if things come about, handle it accordingly. But don't automatically just take everything that you had out on from the previous person with your new person because that ain't a good look. Did did you find yourself doing that? Like, say, um, I don't call you for three hours when we first met, right? I'm just being... I'm not being overboard. She used to want to talk to me every minute no, of every he was hour of every, me every day. Hour of the day. No, but like, let's just say that. Break, let's just say that. Locking in. Never. Yeah. Never. So you know, I was a I was a player. I yeah, just told you, you how I was a raised. Player. I cut all the player in this off. You, you know? did. You did. That whole I don't want to be a player no more. <laughs> You're not a player. You don't crush a lot. All of that was cut out when he met me because he was just you know. I'll just answer my question. Like, did you see me doing things that reminded you of your previous relationships? Like, besides social media, where you'd be like, mm, such and such used to do this. He must be doing it for the same reason. Um, A few things. I feel like it will all it all contribute to cheating because mm-hmm. that was a big red flag for me and something that I had my radars on. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't just necessarily... Um, like social media, like I said, it was, it could have been like, oh, if he doesn't pick up the phone, if I call so many times, or if I'm, you know, messaging you and you take in forever to text back, even though you just was on social media commenting, like stuff like that. Like you start to try oh, to you pinpoint. Was Inspector Gadget. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, oh, I didn't know you was doing all this. Point like every single thing and be like, oh, this is this, this is that. Yes, definitely. So I feel well, like. How, how did you let go of that? Um, I feel like the, like I said, having to understand that what someone else did that can't necessarily be affecting my current situation. Cause I realized I let go of that. I let go of that situation. I let go of that relationship. It was no longer. So it was like, if I wanted to go into any situation, any relationship with a clear mind and a clear heart, I had to understand that I'm starting new. I'm starting fresh. Right. So if I'm going to go ahead and re- bring back all of that negativity, why am I not with that person? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Why are you continuing to allow what that person did to you affect someone new? Mm-hmm. And you're not allowing yourself to really grow and see what else is out there. If that's the case, go be back with that person that was bringing you so much drama. Right. Because that's what you're looking for. Don't do that. So I had to really get that in my mindset. Like, I let go of this person. I let go of this situation. So now that I'm in this new situation, allow for things to flow and to see where it goes. Don't just allow for whatever was hurting me and hindering me from blossoming to continue to help, to continue to go into this relationship because where yeah. would that get me? Back to the point that I was where I was all heartbreaking, heartbroken and just crying and depressed. Like, don't nobody want that. So right. just relieve yourself of all of that negativity and just go on with the open heart. Yeah, and for those of you that are going through it right now, understand that this process is not easy, right? That fear of having your heart broken, again, is very real. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable, again, is very scary, especially if you've been in a relationship with somebody for a long time, you yeah. gave them your heart, you gave them all your trust, and they just broke it. It is hard to give somebody back your heart again. Right. And I don't think that you should, honestly, I don't think that you should just give somebody your heart, no, right? Like we said right. in the last uh, podcast, you really have to allow people to earn your love, to right. earn your heart, because it's it's sacred, it's precious. You don't want to just give this to everybody and allow people to control you, because when you, you give somebody your heart, they have control over you whether you want to admit it or not like they it it can make you love can make you do some crazy things so you don't want to just give it to everybody but you have to take the steps to to really heal right and understand what you're going through allow yourself to one day become vulnerable again so you can experience 
that real love. And I think that takes us into our next step, which is just taking time to improve yourself. Yeah, taking time out for yourself. That's a big one. You have to take time out for yourself. Um, what you want to touch on it? No, you can go ahead. I feel like for me, I know. Um, well, she just want to go away. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to learn some things like that I'm she's like, just expressing herself to y'all. I feel like it's important. Like I feel like. Well, I can't speak for the men because I'm only a woman, so I can only, you know, speak for us. But I feel like we get yeah, into this it, you mindset. You can't speak for us because we too strong. We don't get hurt. We yeah, go through y'all breakups. get hurt for sure. Nah, we be crying. Probably we just don't let y'all know. Us at times, but I feel like it's really important for you to have that time frame where you're, you know, just getting yourself together. And I feel like I definitely had that period of time from when I was going through a bad situation before I met Devin, um, and what. For me, that was pretty much just like getting myself mentally and physically in a better position because you notice know, sometimes with me personally, when I'm depressed or upset, either I'm going to binge eat <laughs> or I'm not going to eat at all. But usually I'm binge eating. So I noticed like I was just doing things that was just getting me in a slump and just making me not being my best self. And it's just like, why are you taking so much energy from yourself and just making yourself like just not care. Like you don't care about your your health. You don't care about your appearance. You don't care about this. You don't care about that. Like you so stressed. Like you ain't gonna find somebody else looking like that and acting like you don't care about yourself. Right. So it's like take time out for yourself to make sure that you feel good about yourself. Make sure you're doing something, whether it be like mentally uh meditating or taking classes to help you get back on track mentally going to church if that's that's your avenue finding yourself spiritually whatever the case may be working out if that's your your idea of just being your best self or you know just finding something right you said like you said to relieve that stress but to also make you find what it is about yourself and be in touch with yourself to make you be like you know what i am the ish and i can walk down the street and get whoever i want who is you nobody goodbye because yeah. right. you're going to be mad and missing me in the long run so like, i don't do even know that like man that. i feel sorry exactly for that man. like who i wouldn't know him if i walked past him on the street x who <laughs> who is you so you need to get in that mindset and that's important for you to take that time out for yourself but what you what you should be working towards like when you take time to improve yourself before you get back into the relation a, a new relationship you need to get yourself to a level where you say to yourself that this person, this man or woman does not bring, does not determine my value, mm-hmm. right? Because a lot of times in bad relationships, if you're in a really bad relationship, that person can make you feel less than, right? Yeah. Like you're not, like you feel like you don't know your worth, like you don't know your value, but you want to get to a point where somebody doesn't give you value, they just add on, yeah. right? Like the the love that they bring just adds on to your the self-worth that you already created, for yourself. So whether that re- that person leaves your life or the relationship doesn't last that long, they can't take your worth with them, right? right? That it belongs to you because you took enough time to love yourself, to care about yourself, to know your worth so that nobody can ever determine what that is. Because sometimes when you walk out this door in this world and you haven't taken the time to really know your worth, then other people, you allow other people to decide it for you. But when you actually pour into yourself, Right. And realize what you're truly worth. Nobody can ever take that away from you. So you just want to take the time to focus on yourself and don't try to jump from relationship to relationship, hoping that the new person takes your mind off the old person, because that that never works that way. You want to really take the time to really heal yourself from that, that bad relationship that you experienced. Yeah. So the last step for us is to make sure that you're always in constant communication with your new partner, the reason being is because I feel like that's a big one. If you're not communicating about issues that occur, right. something little could be like drastic and like cause you to just like go overboard or end the relationship by you just not simply communicating something. So I just feel like that's really important. What you think? No, I think so too. Because if you want to take an example from our relationship, she talked a lot about how social media really played a big role in her past relationships of it it not working out. So her just sitting down and really communicating with me of why she is the way she is, Mm -hmm. it allowed me to make the decision that, you know what, maybe I do need to fall back from the social media stuff because she went through a lot of stuff in her past and this is triggering her. So maybe I need to stop 
doing these things if I really care about this person. And it really took me some time. I, I'm I'm not going to lie to you. It took me some time to really understand why it was so important not to like a girl's picture on Instagram or not to follow new girls. It took me some time. It took a lot of communicating between us for me to really understand the impact that it was having on her life. So sitting down with your partner and really just opening up with them like, look, this is what I've been through in my past. I'm not trying to go through this again. So let's just make sure that we work to create the best relationship possible, understand each other's triggers so that we don't set each other off. And also so that the person understands when you looking at them crazy, it's for a reason. Right. Like you've been through some stuff. So just communicating um, about your past and not holding each other accountable for what happened to you know you and your past, I think is big to the health of your relationship moving forward. Yeah, and I feel like another to touch on that is just also understanding that communicating is not necessarily trying to pretty much control your partner. I feel like sometimes that kind of gets lines get crossed and things kind of get blurry with feeling like, oh, well, like you said, if I'm telling you one thing, they feel like you want to control something. Oh, I don't want you doing this on social media. I, I They feel like, oh, you're trying to control what I'm doing, right? She was trying to control me. No, but like I, being she, serious. She did. You did try to control me. Yeah, but, but it's for a reason. So right, that's but what once saying, I understood like, it. Understanding that that communication is about communicating effectively as to telling that oh, person. Oh, you was only following saying, 322 people yesterday. Why are you following 324? Uh, Who are the people you following? I was getting all that. Okay. I was getting all that. And okay. And I don't care. I'll do it again. So but, then what I would do is if I was following 322 one day, I would go back, no, find two people I can unfollow to get me to people, 320 and then follow two new people. people. to be sneaky. All right, you're right. No, we're not. Cut it. What, y- y'all what shouldn't I do am that, though. saying is that understanding that communicating, you're communicating effectively with that person so that they don't feel like you're trying to control what they're doing and know that it's for a reason and make sure it's for a good reason. Like, don't just say, Oh, I don't want you doing this, that and the third, because I just don't want you to like, no one wants to be controlled, especially as an adult in a relationship. So just making sure if it is something concerning you or something that's bothering you or a trigger for you that you communicate effectively. Why? So that y'all can both come to some type of resolution because but like, then I think that also helps them weed out people. Yeah. So if you telling somebody like, like I should say, you don't want to control somebody, but if you telling somebody that this is what hurt me in the past and they keep doing what hurt you in the past, then, they're then not they don't you. care. No, right? they got to go. Because you should put that person before yourself. So if you know that's hurting them, then you just need to stop doing it. And that's how you can tell if somebody's really real or serious about the relationship is if they try to avoid the things that trigger you. So yes. look out for that. Yes. So that is our how you can relieve yourself of all the extra baggage. It's about to be 2020. 2020. Yes. 2020. Yes. So so a whole new decade. Yeah, I know. I'm looking forward to a lot of stuff in our relationship. Yes. We're going on four years of being married and yes. you know, we're just working to make this, you know, the best years yes. of our relationship and you know, just watching each other grow old and just learning, you know, different things about marriage because like I said before, neither of us saw the marriage growing up so we we're just learning on the go or at and that's, least a healthy marriage we yeah marriages, but yeah. not a healthy marriage yeah so we, we're basically just learning on the go and we're just sharing our experiences with you guys like we say all the time we're not experts but we've been through a lot we learned a lot and we just want to share that information with you guys especially some of the young people going through you know relationships marriage who are just looking For couples who are going through the same struggles as they're going through, we just want you to know that we're struggling and we're growing with you guys. So just continue to just try to get better because if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Continue to just always try to get better in your relationships. Always try to improve. Do things that really, you know, keep that fire lit in your relationships, man, and just let life take its course because – you never know what can happen if you just give everything you all and just continue to try to improve. So make sure you keep tuning into this podcast. Yes. Um, leave comments of some of the things that some of the topics you want us to talk about. Rate this podcast. Run it up. Leave your, your comments on here. Help us grow. What Follow it? us on Instagram um, at Real Relationship Podcast. Mm-hmm. Follow both of our personal accounts. Mine's is still in the game. Asha still. So, um, 
We just want to wish y'all a happy new year. We don't put out a new episode before the new year. We want to wish y'all a happy, happy new, new year. year. We hope that 2020 just brings y'all unbelievable blessings, success, yes. all that. And, of course, love. Real love. Love. Real relationships. Yes. We'll see y'all next episode. Till next time, y'all. Keep it real. Bye.